I'm Marty Stauffer. Some creatures are so beautiful, they can almost take your breath away. But there's only one animal which can literally leave you gasping for air. It's a four-legged fumigator which has mastered chemical warfare, the skunk. Skunks are so secure in their noxious defense that they wander almost anywhere without special caution. And to an uninvited visitor who does not heed its warning, the skunk will leave a lasting impression. Although most renowned for its odor, the skunk does have some redeeming qualities. For one thing, it's an asset in controlling rodent and insect populations. Let's learn more as we take a close-up, yet cautious look at those smelly skunks. Few creatures can stop us dead in our tracks as quickly as the skunk. And for good reason. Butyl mercaptan, that skunk musk to most of us, contains sulfuric acid. It's what makes the musk burn our eyes. Here, skunky, skunky. With this in mind, I prepare myself from head to toe. Here, skunky, skunky. Late each afternoon, a striped skunk treks across my yard. Today, I plan to get a close-up look at its remarkable defense. To document the event, my camera will be used both as a witness and as a shield. When the tail flares, two tiny nipples emerge from each musk sac just inside the anus. Packed in muscle, these sacs can fire a blinding teaspoon-sized squirt as far as 15 feet. A six-shooter, the skunk gets a half dozen shots before it needs to reload. Of course, one shot usually does the trick. Oh no, this thing leaks. <laughs> Water can rinse off some of the spray, but a form of ascorbic acid, as is in tomato juice, is needed to scrub off the residue. Any left on the skin could linger for a month or more. There are four distinct species of skunks in America. All of their ranges overlap only here in southwestern Arizona. Skunks avoid the searing daytime heat by occupying crannies and caves until the coolness of dusk. 
The most widely distributed species is the striped skunk, also called the polecat. The striped skunk's desert menu includes lizards, snakes, small mammals, and even flower petals. This is the rare hog-nosed skunk. It's our largest skunk. It's also called the rooter skunk for its incessant rooting for grubs with its long bare snout. It is superior in strength to the striped and is easily distinguished by its solid white back and naked pig-like nose. Found mostly in Mexico and South America, the specialized diet of the hog nose has limited its numbers. By digging with its powerful front claws, the hog nose can reach insect larvae up to two feet beneath the ground. As with all skunks, the patchwork pattern of black and white makes them nearly invisible as they forage by night. This camouflage is their first defense against predators. Smallest of the four species, the spotted skunk, or civet, is not really spotted at all. Rather, it has six serpentine stripes. No two spotted skunks have the same pattern. Being the only skunk that can jump or climb trees, it's far more nimble than its cousins. Perhaps the rarest of all skunks is the hooded skunk. Its tail is longer than its body and is carried erect as it waddles along in search of beetles, its primary food. Like the hog-nosed, the hooded skunk uses its nose and long claws to dig up insects. The hooded is so named for the white wedge that caps the top of its head. The rest of the body is usually black. Skunks often den together in cold climates to share warmth. Here in upper Michigan, the coming winter gives a sense of urgency to this fattened male striped skunk. It hurries to renovate an abandoned fox den. Although a dozen skunks may congregate, there will never be more than one adult male. If another male tries to encroach, a bloody battle is sure to ensue. Strangely, Skunks are careful not to release spray which could smell up their own fur, and so do not resort to chemical warfare when fighting among themselves. contest between males can go on for over an hour and sometimes result in death.
the loser will need to fashion itself a snug burrow before winter hits. So nature has insulated it with a two inch thick layer of body fat, buying at the time it will need to seek another haven. For the winter, there's no time to celebrate. It's bedtime. Skunks do not truly hibernate. Instead, their metabolism slows and they go into a deep sleep. If there's a sudden thaw, the skunk will awake and resume activity. The warmth of early spring beckons this male skunk. In the course of the winter, he will have lost at least a third of his body weight. As the earth warms, the male emerges restless with a purposeful mission. With an extraordinary sense of smell, he can track down even the faintest traces of nearby food. But in early spring, male skunks have one priority, a sexually responsive female. The male skunk is an aggressive lover. He holds the female by the neck during copulation. He's also polygamous and will search for miles for other females, mating with as many as half a dozen. With all this sexual activity, most females bear offspring. Sixty-five days after mating, woodland dens and burrows of the striped skunk are filled with new life. Newborn skunks are sparsely covered with hair, yet their skins are already pigmented with black and white patterns. Even before their eyes and ears open, at about three weeks of age, the kits can release minute amounts of that famously foul scent.
the largest recorded litter of striped skunks is 18. But a normal sized family varies between four and nine kits. As twilight falls, dangers arise for this mother and her brood. Predators of little skunks abound. The great horned owl often preys on them. Amassing into a tight group befuddles the owl into believing that it's seeing one big skunk. The strategy has worked for now. Even so, the great horned owl is the skunk's number one predator. And the owl couldn't be better equipped to hunt skunks. It has almost no sense of smell. As the young skunks mature, much time is spent in mock rehearsals with litter mates. With tails flared and feet stamping, the kits practice the first two warning signals they'll someday give their enemies. If unheeded, an intruder will get a shot of fiery liquid musk. With the young preoccupied, the mother's hunger pangs compel her to forage nearby. This pilot black snake seems fully aware that it's on the skunk's menu, but it also seems to have no intention of being the special of the day. The skunk is an omnivore, eating both plant and animal matter. They are, in effect, natural pesticides. One study of 1,700 skunks revealed that 57% of their diet consists of insects. The remainder included plant matter, grains, reptiles, and rodents. To control rats and mice, some farmers encourage skunks to den near their barns. Once it's been pinned down, larger prey is literally pawed to death. Though sometimes a carrier of rabies, the skunk's benefits far outweigh its shortcomings.
As the sun sets in the desert sky, a spotted skunk checks each rocky niche for some crawling crumb of food. The little skunk does not search in vain, for dinner awaits just around the corner. The scorpion's poisonous stinger does not repel the voracious skunk. It's immune to the venom. The chilly calm of nightfall invigorates the skunk's nocturnal nature. Determination born of hunger, the skunk bites the bull snake's head over and over. Among skunks, the spotted is known for its agility and cleverness, and it's easy to see why. Like its larger cousins, this bold little skunk thrives by tooth and nail. In the past, a little musk unfairly befouled the skunk's reputation. But if we can look past our noses, we can appreciate the skunk's importance to a wide range of ecosystems.
we can also marvel at its feisty lust for life. The skunk has adapted well to coexistence with humans, but like so many other creatures which are not fully understood, the skunk has suffered a distorted and oftentimes negative image. To many people, skunks stink and that's all they want to know. Yet as we explore the spectrum of nature's diverse creatures, we see a beautiful pattern emerging. Each species plays a critical role in the grand scheme of things. For that reason, we must always leave room for those smelly skunks. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.